legs, 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 more I ain't got a female. Legs, 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 more I ain't got a female. Legs. Let's talk about the multipedes. We're done with that. We're done with that. And if you haven't watched the videos on these guys, watch it. Because today we're going to be moving on to subphylum mandibulata. What makes subphylum mandibulata a unique group on its own? Their third head appendage is modified to form the mandible for processing food. Superclasses! The major superclasses under subphylum mandibulata would be your myriapods, crustaceans, hexapods. We are going to follow the taxonomic grouping where myriapods are subsumed under subphylum mandibulata. In more recent taxonomic analyses, myriapods are actually more closely related to chelicerates and they form their own clade known as paradoxopoda. Insects or hexapodents evolved from crustaceans and they form their own clade called pancrustacea. That's another way to look at it, but for now, myriapoda will be part of mandibulata along with crustaceans and hexapodons. Okay? Either way, whatever happens, they have many parin nilan legs. To differentiate these three super classes, some of the distinguishing features are written over there. We're gonna be focusing on myriapods on this video. We're gonna be talking about crustaceans and insects on their own separate videos. <laughs> Myriapoda literally means many feet. The appendages are uniramous. The main body plan of your myriapods would just be the head and then the trunk, and then you just have the legs coming out of each of the segments of the trunk. We will be talking about two orders, chilopoda and diplopoda. Millipede translates to million feet, while centipede translates to hundred feet. The names themselves highlight the most obvious difference between these two orders, but in no way does this reflect how many feet these guys have in actuality. Oh, it has a lot of feet, hundreds of feet, centipede. What about this one? Oh wow, it has more feet, maybe millions of feet, millipede. What it really boils down to is that millipedes appear to have more walking legs than centipedes. Centipedes have one pair of walking legs per body segment. Millipedes have two pairs of walking legs per body segment. This is also why millipedes are scientifically named as diplopoda, double foot. What happened with millipedes is that two body segments fused into one and you call that a diplo segment. In effect, they really still just have one pair of walking legs per body segment, but because you fused two body segments together, now it appears as if one segment has two pairs of walking legs. And that's not the only thing that they're fusing. They have a structure in their head called the nathochilarium, and that's actually the fusion of the first and second maxillae. But what about centipedes? Why are they called chilopoda? Chilopoda. Do they have cold feet? Yun, kinakabahan. Chilo actually means jaw, jaw, foot. The first pair of walking legs, which we call the maxillipeds, are modified to help the organism subdue prey. In the case of this guy, Scolopendra, you call those forcipules. Those are actually modified walking legs. Other ways to differentiate millipedes from centipedes. Millipedes, typically, they're slower moving, have more tubular bodies, and they're more often than not detritivores. Cleanup crew. Centipedes, on the other hand, they have relatively flatter bodies, move faster, and many of them are predatory. Their cuticle isn't really waxy. Then they have spiracles that cannot be covered. They have to find a way to keep themselves from drying up. That's why you usually find centipedes coming out at night when it's not hot, or you usually find them in moist places. Millipedes, on the other hand, you typically find these in your gardens, in the soil. Once you try to pick them up and touch them and bother them, they curl up into the spiral, and that's one of their main ways to defend themselves. Kasi nga, bagal-bagal nila gumalaw, di ba? Napulot mo ah. Kung hindi mo pa rin tinantanan, kahit nag-coil up na siya, pinulot mo, pinipindot-pindot mo pa rin. Mapapansin yung bigla siyang parang and then ang baho. Then you're like, yeah! They also have glands that secrete these substances to just tell you to fuck off! Leave me alone! Pag tinuturuan mo yung baby millipede ng nursery rhyme, di ba yung I have two hands, paano mo siya tuturuan? I have two hands, the left and the right, the left and the right. A few moments later. The left and the right, the left and the right. Today, we talked about myriapods, and hopefully, after everything that we've learned so far, you can now answer a few of these questions. Are millipedes and centipedes worms? Are millipedes and centipedes insects? 
I think by now you do know that the answer to both questions is one big fat no! Next two videos will still be talking about the members of Subphylum Mandibulata, but we will be focusing on Superclass Crustacea on part 3 and Superclass Hexapoda on part 4. If you want to know more about myriapods, go ahead, check out these videos. They should be fun to watch. Or better yet, go out in your backyard. Go ahead and observe them. See them in action. They're just doing their thing. Makes you reflect. Diba, sila ang sesaya nila, ganyan lang. Tapos tayo, parang ang dami natin pinoproblema. Sometimes it helps to just frame your life in the eyes of these creatures around you. And maybe you can get a sense of peace and zen and tranquility and inner joy. Bye!